questions. So I uh, definitely like uh, you people to uh, tell me how do you feel about Islam and Muslims? How do you personally feel about terrorism and activities of terrorism? How much do you hold the Muslims responsible for all this? So, and I've been telling the people that Americans as a whole have found them to be the best people on earth, mashallah. Because whenever I interacted, very sensible people, very good-hearted people, and it's unfortunate that an American population is held by a few, I would say, gangsters. Yeah. These politicians are gangsters because whatever they want for them, for their power, they do anything for it, and that's destroying masses altogether. <laughs> You are actually in the U.S. Can you please just look there and tell the name? Okay, so my name is Lauda. Okay. Louder because I'm okay. So my name is Laura. Um, actually, I'm from Colombia, but I'm, I have been living here in New York for about like three years from now. Okay. Hey, my name is Sergio. I've been living here for ten years, and I'm okay. from Colombia. Okay. Uh, thank you. I'm Imran. I'm from uh, Hyderabad, India. So I'm just doing a, a brief survey of how the Americans have the perception for Islam in the global scenario now and uh, there are many misconceptions so I'd uh, definitely like uh, you people to uh, tell me how do you feel about Islam and Muslims? Well, um, coming from a Catholic uh, com uh, community okay. uh, we, that what I learned in Colombia is like we are related to Islam because okay. uh, at some point uh, Muslims were part of Spain very true. So uh, our like ancestors came from a mix of Islam and Latin in, oh, really? in the in the Catholic Church. Okay. Um, for for us, is it's like an ancient uh, religious system where uh, uh, it's the same as us. You know that we have some morals, some things to learn from uh, ancient books um, and um, it, it, it goes really really like back in time it's like all this than Christianism and Catholicism okay uh, but do you really know how the Muslims become different from the Catholics uh, or the Protestants or the Christianity itself or Judaism itself? Mm, like you're very right not, when you say not it. quite sure, but um, everything started because a prophet. Yeah, true. Uh, Allah, and yeah. he brought new ways of thinking and technology. Uh, in fact, that's very uh, true. I mean, you have a bit of uh, more closer knowledge about Islam, like. Uh, See, basically what we believe is, uh, we say that Allah is the God mm -hmm. and this is what was taught by Prophet Moses mm -hmm. and we consider Jesus Christ, my peace be upon him, to be a prophet in Islam. So, as a Muslim, what Quran commands me is to love and respect Jesus Christ as much as I love and respect Prophet Muhammad. Mm -hmm. Now, our uh, understanding is that the people uh, of the Bani Israel, the children of Israel, when they were selected by Almighty God, Allah, to lead the mankind, it was later that when Allah revealed Torah to Musa alayhi salam, Moses may peace be upon him, so these people later, they changed the Torah, they corrupted it. So the original Torah did not remain. And then Allah sent, after Musa alayhi salam, Allah sent Isa alayhi salam, from the Bani Israel and what we believe is he is not God incarnate he is not the son of God he is not equal to God but he is one of the mightiest messenger like many messengers came before him he is a sinless messenger a sinless prophet for in Islam we consider all prophets to be sinless and chosen people of Almighty God to whom Allah reveals like he revealed to prophet Moses or prophet Abraham or prophet Isaac and then what we say is his mother was the righteous most woman in universe and that is how the Quran teaches us about that uh, I don't know whether you ever read the Quran inshallah before I leave I'll give you a copy mm -hmm. of the translation of the Quran in reverence of mother Mary we have an entire chapter in the Quran chapter is actually not a correct term in Islam we call it surah a complete surah in reverence of mother Mary and the name of that surah is surah Maryam surah Mary mm -hmm. and then if you read the third surah of the Quran which I mean third surah again you can take it as a connotation for chapter 
when you read the third surah of the Quran, uh, ayat number 42, so ayat is the Arabic word which is a connotation for words. Now there a Muslim is told, Wa is ghalatil malaikatu ya Maryamu in Allah astafaki wa taharaki wa astafaki ala nisail alameen. And behold, the angel said, O Mary, God has chosen you and purified you and chosen you above the women of all nations. So for us Muslims, from the Quran we are taught that Mother Mary in the sight of Almighty Allah is more righteous than any other woman on the face of the earth, including the mother of Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him. So now what we say is Prophet Muhammad did not bring anything new. He actually came to correct what the people have changed in the Torah, the Zubur or the Angel. Now, basically when we go to the Catholic Church or when we go to the Protestant Church, you find that the original scripture is different altogether. Because as a Catholic, a person believes there are about 73 books. But the Protestants, they say, no, these are extra books, it's only 66. But now you check the Quran of the Muslims. You go to any house of the Muslim, any common man's house. And the one that was recently found, I don't know whether you uh, just heard recently there was a news in almost all the international uh, newspapers that there was a copy of the Quran found which is almost very close about 13 years or 12 years after the death of Prophet Muhammad may peace be upon him. Now if you can just with the carbon technology if you can cross check it with what we carry in the homes so the original text is still preserved and the honor is given there. So this is one side of the whole subject that I discussed with you and we Muslims we say that Prophet Muhammad was sent as the last messenger, continuing the same teachings given in to Moses, like for example, when you read the Old Testament, book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 5, verse number 7 to 9, or book of Exodus, chapter number 20, verse number 3, 4 and 5, where the commandments to Moses were given, and he says that you shall not have any other gods besides him. Okay. You shall not bow down yourself to any other deity except him, because that God feels very jealous if you worship any other god. So this is one commandment that Islam too has that Allahu Ahad, which is the touchstone of theology. Say to them that Allah is the only one. So it's, He is not just one; He is the only one. And then Walam Yakul Lahu Ahad, the fourth ayat of 112th surah of the Quran says, "There is none like unto Him." So a similar message is given. Now Moses, when he was interacting to his people, if you read the Book of Deuteronomy, chapter number six, verse number four, he says, "Shama Israelo Adonai Ilohino Adonai Had." Here, O Israel, your Lord, the God is only one God. And now, when Moses said to the people that God is only one, you see Jesus in Gospel of Mark, chapter number 12, verse number 29, he repeats verbatim the same words. Shama Israelo Adnoi Elohino Adnoi Had. Here, O Israel, your Lord, the God is only one God. And there are many places in the Bible where Jesus Christ is giving a direct explanation to the people that he is not Almighty God, but the one sent from the God. For example, if you read Gospel of John, chapter number 5, verse number 30, now Jesus gives a very powerful statement denying his divinity. He says, I can of mine own self do nothing. So this statement is a clear denial of somebody being divine. Because one who is divine does everything by his will. And Jesus is saying, I can by my own self do nothing. As I hear, meaning whatever revelation comes to me, as I hear, I judge. And my judgment is just because I seek not my will, but the will of the Father who sent me. So what we felt is the confusion came when he said God is the Father. So now when you read the Gospel of John, chapter number 10, verse number 30, 31, 32 and 33. So you find in Gospel of John, chapter number 10, verse number 30, that Jesus says, I and my Father are one. So in verse number 31, the Bible states that some Jews, they picked up some stones to hit at Jesus. So verse number 32 he says, why do you want to hit at me? Verse number 33 they reply, because you blaspheme, you call yourself the son of God. So in 34 Jesus replies, is it not mentioned in your scripture, whoever does good are the sons of God. So everybody who does good at that time are called the sons of God. So in that sense, that is God. So what we say is, Allah is not the biological father and he does not have biological children. He doesn't have biological parents. So this is the side of the story. How do you take uh, the global scenario now with terrorism, ISIS, and then Trump in the politics is speaking so much about Muslims and all this stuff. How do you personally feel about terrorism and the activities of terrorism? How much do you hold the Muslims responsible for all this? No. 
I, I think humanity as all well, is responsible for whatever humanity is responsible for. For whatever happens. See, basically, I have uh, been speaking in my talks and I have been telling the people that Americans as a whole, I found them to be the best people on earth, mashallah. Because whenever I interacted, very sensible people, very good-hearted people, and it's unfortunate that an American population is held by a few, I would say, gangsters. Yeah. These politicians are gangsters because whatever they want for them, for their power, they do anything for it. And that's destroying masses altogether. Thank you so much yeah, for all the cooperation. Good. Would you like to have a translation of the Quran? No, that's okay. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Can you Thank just you. give them a translation of the Quran? No, it's you fine. Can yeah, okay, fine. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Auzu billahi minash shaitan rajeem Kullu nafsin zai khatul maut Allahu Akbar Allah is the greatest What a message for us Allah says Every life Everything that has life Will taste death And I'm here in New York In this beautiful place In this beautiful city In this busy city In one of the costliest cities Of our world In this beautiful country United States of America And just look behind me you have those great structures. The man has put all the effort to construct them. Construct them and make them look so high. But what does Allah say? Oh mankind, you have put so much effort to make this world so beautiful. Do you know something? Allah says in Ali Imran Surah number 3, ayat number 185, Every life will taste death. On day of judgment, you will be recompensed. For whatever you have done If you have done good You will get the reward If you have done evil You will pay for it You will suffer the punishment And then Allah says about these huge structures That we have engineered with our human intelligence Extraordinary work Marvelous work But Allah says In Surah Rahman Surah number 55 Ayat number 27 <laughs> كل من عليها فان كل من عليها فان كل من عليها فان ويبقى وجه ربك ويبقى وجه ربك ذو الجلال والإكرام فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان كل من عليها فان Everything in universe will perish Even these huge structures there Can you see those huge structures there? Even they will perish Nothing will remain Except the Almighty God I pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala To guide entire humanity To understand the fact La ilaha illallah There is no God but Allah Muhammad Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Is the messenger of Allah A'udhu billahi minash shaitan ar-rajim Bismillahir rahmanir rahim Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen Ar-Rahmanir rahim Maliki yawmiddin Iyaka na'abudu wa iyaka nasta'in Ihdina thurat al-mustaqeen Thurat al-lazina anamta alayhim Ghayri al-maghdubi alayhim Waladdalleen Ameen Bismillahirrahmanirrahim MashaAllah I just recited the first surah of the glorious Quran Quran is the book The Muslims claim to be 100% verbatim word of Allah Rabbul Alameen the Almighty God of entire universe the Muslims they believe convictedly they are committed to the belief that there is no God except Allah Rabbul Alameen and Allah alone is the creator of the entire universe the Quran is the last manual for the do's and don'ts of human beings The Quran is considered by the Muslims To be a book Revealed to beloved Prophet Muhammad May peace and blessings of Allah be upon him For a period of 23 lunar years And in this 23 years of his life He was considered by the people around him To be the true messenger from Allah 
and for the first time when he claimed he is the messenger of Allah it was at the age of 40 years of his life and for the past 40 years before he claimed that he is the messenger of Allah the people called him trustworthy truthful meaning the one who would never put the people to disbelief and distrust for anything they had entrusted with him neither would he ever tell a lie even for the sake of humor or joke he wasn't he was a born orphan and mashallah after the revelation of the Quran he told the people that he has been selected chosen appointed by the Almighty God Allah Rabbul Alameen as the guide to entire humanity whether they be Christians the Jews the atheists the agnostics the Hindus the Buddhists for all humanity Prophet Muhammad may peace and blessings of Allah be upon him was chosen as the last and final Prophet and Messenger of Allah this surah that is my focus now is from the glorious Quran the first surah in which Allah Rabbul Alameen says Auz Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem Bismillah Rahman Rahim Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen All thanks and praise be to the Almighty God Allah the creator of the universe the cherisher, the sustainer, the originator of the creation of entire universe everything besides Allah is his creation Allah is the creator and everything besides Allah is cherished and sustained by Allah alone without any support and need Allah says he is Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim meaning, meaning the most gracious the most merciful he then says Maliki Yomiddin he is master of judgment day meaning to say that this life that Allah Rabbul Alameen gave to humanity this life Allah says has been given as an examination as testified in the glorious Quran Allah says Maliki Yomiddin he is master of judgment day and then Allah Rabbul Alameen taught humanity to make a promise to Allah that they will worship none except Allah they will not seek anyone's help except Allah Rabbul Alameen and then Allah says meaning O oh Allah of all the things I can ask for help from you the most important is to guide me to the way which is the right path chosen by you and of course that is Islam guide me on the path on which the people when they walk before me you rewarded them do not guide me on a part of those on whom your wrath was sent nor on the path of those who went astray وَأَخِرُ دَوَانِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ عَوْضُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَانِ الرَّحِيمِ قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدُ اللَّهُ الثَّمَدُ لَمْ يَلِدْ وَلَمْ يُولَدْ وَلَمْ يَكُلْ لَهُ كُفُوًا أَحَدُ The surah that I just recited is from the glorious Quran and this is known as Surah Ikhlas the 112th surah of the glorious Quran before I give a brief explanation on this surah let me tell you what is a surah the people who read Bible they generally refer as chapter or verses but Allah Rabbul Alameen has preferred to use in the glorious Quran surah and this can be a connotation which for the English people they may understand it to be like a chapter though it's not a chapter but for the convenience for them to understand they may consider it like a chapter of the Bible and Allah Rabbul Alameen referred to the statements of the Quran to his glorious statements in the Quran as ayat and ayat is the plural of ayat and ayat may be a connotation which the Christian speaking the Christian English speaking people of the Bible may consider it as verses in the Bible now coming to the subject the surah that I recited is called surah ikhlas and ikhlas in Arabic if 
translated into English would mean the purity and the purity of faith. Now this surah is also called the touchstone of theology. What do I mean by that? Now this is a litmus test. This is an exam that any deity worshipped by mankind has to pass if truly that is Almighty God. And this definition in the glorious Quran has been set by none other than Allah Rabbul Alameen, the Almighty God Himself. Allah says that if you want to know who the God is of mankind, then let him pass this four line definition. And what is the definition? Allah says, Bismillah Rahman Rahim. In the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful. The surah begins with the first ayat of 112th surah as Qul, say to them, Huwallahu Ahad, that Allah is the only one. He's not just one, he's the only one. And the English speaking people know very well what do you mean by the only one? It means there is none except him. And then Allah says, Allahu Thamad. Allah says he is a thamad. The Arabic word a thamad has great voluminous meaning. But to understand it in brief, it would just be given as a definition, as an understanding, as an understanding that a thamad is the one who does not depend upon anyone and everything besides that one a thamad depends absolutely upon him. And Allah says he is a samad That almighty God is a person Almighty God is that being On whom entire universe depends But that God, the one true God Does not depend upon anyone And then Allah says Lam yalid wa lam yulad Subhanallah, glory be to Allah He says he has no biological parents And he has no biological children There is no biological parent or no biological child for Almighty God. And then Allah Rabbul Alameen says, Walam yakun lahu kufu wan ahad. And there is no one like unto the only one. Meaning, if you bring another example, try to say this is Almighty God Allah, then that cannot be Allah to the extent that if you imagine in your mind something that maybe this figure is Allah, then Allah says, No. That cannot be Allah. The moment you comprehend anything that cannot be Allah, this is the touchstone of theology. Now those who worship Jesus Christ, may peace be upon him. Whomever you worship besides Allah, Allah says, put that deity, put that God to this litmus test and you will find that except Allah, nobody fits into this perfect four-line definition of God. And it's a challenge. It's a challenge to entire humanity to get a better definition of Almighty God. With this I would like to conclude the talk by inviting those who do not believe in Allah to believe La ilaha illallah. There is no God but Allah and attest Muhammad Rasulullah. Believe that Muhammad, may peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, is the messenger of Allah.